And welcome back. Joining us now is the candidate for the 18th City Council District seat, William Moore. And welcome here to In the District. Nice, nice to have me. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Listen, so you're running for the 18th District seat. Uh, talk to us about your reason for why you want to run. Well, I'm running for a number of reasons. Um, there's not, just not one that's germane to the campaign, but there's many. One is, you know, the um, job situation in, uh, in my district. We have a lot of folks that are out of work, that need, need um, a gainful employment, and the medium income is about 34000 And like I said many times, that's, that's, that's just not enough to raise a family of one, much less a family of four. So we need to raise the, the, um, the income level of our district because of gentrification. And when gentrification takes full effect, which it is taken right now, um, a lot of folks are going to be put out and it's going to cause a rise in homelessness. So I want to stop that. I want to raise the medium income from 30000 to about 60000 and offer young people, and not only young people, but adults, jobs paying about $30, $30 an hour. So when you look at the district as a whole and you see it out there, what do you identify as some of the key things that need to be done for your district? Well, you know, in Parkchester, they got a dilapidated subway system. The residents are complaining about that. We have seniors that are on crutches, on wheelchairs. They can't even make it to their doctor's appointment. Uh, uh, folks that work in the, in the district cannot even make it to, to work on, on time because the, the, the escalator service is horrendous. Um, there's talks about having an elevated um, um, elevator put into the, into the station to make the, the commute easy for, for the com uh, commuters. But again, that transportation is an issue. Also, the bus line is an issue in the district. I propose having a, um, probably a dollar van service similar to what's in Brooklyn and bring, bring that service to the industries, um, to the, the district so we can open up an industry for entrepreneurship that can provide this type of service in, in the district as well. As you're walking the district, what are you hearing from people? Well, you know, one thing is that people are concerned about not only the, um, the crime issues and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, um, the, the gentrification issues and stuff like that, but the rising cost of, of, um, of um, ownership, property ownership in the, in the district. Um, people don't have the, the means to really um, purchase properties and, and get th themselves together in terms of putting together a platform for this district. So. As a candidate, I see that you've often referred to yourself as the unbought candidate. Uh, and there are several candidates that are in this race. Uh, but when you look at yourself, and mm -hmm. we know that the, there is no incumbent, but we do know that uh, Reverend Ruben Diaz Sr. actually held the seat once before. Uh, what do you feel distinguishes you from mm -hmm. him in terms of being that unbought candidate? Well, you know, I have always been running against the Democratic organization because I feel that they're an inept and they're not really putting forth a, a platform that's going to be beneficial to the community. And I ran in 2013. I'm the only candidate that pr pretty much have ran for this district, except for Ruben Diaz. He ran in 2002, I believe it was. But he only ran um, for a mere, um, he ran and won for, uh, for a period of about two months. Then he ran for the uh, 32nd uh, senatorial seat. Um, you know, the community wants consistency. Reverend Diaz is basically running for this position so that he can, he can get his pension fulfilled in two more years, and then he's going to basically hold the position as a, as, a, as a placeholder so he can pass it off in a special election to someone else. I'm against all that. My candidacy is about the people. I'm a, I'm a candidate for all the people, and at the same time, I'm the first African-American that ran for this position in over 50 years. We have never had an African-American candidate like myself to run for this position, and it's about time we do. Now, you spoke of yourself and Reverend Ruben uh, Diaz Sr., so I have to ask a question. Recently, he was at a campaign event. You grabbed the microphone at mm -hmm. an event of his. Uh, looking back, what happened there, and uh, do you regret it? No, it's not about a regret. Here's the thing. I, I was invited to the event. I had invitations. I went with my campaign manager, and um, upon getting there, we saw people that we knew, and we did some hugs and kisses and so forth. And upon entering the uh, facility, uh, Reverend Diaz staff, Salamanca staff, uh, Louis Sepulveda staff, Assemblyman Louis Sepulveda started to um, attack us, saying that we didn't belong here. And I'm like, what's, what's going on here? This is America. So they constantly kept on making these little, uh, what we thought, thought was vile threats, empty threats. And they, they threatened that they was going to call the police on us. And we said, I said to my campaign manager, I said, no, they're not going to really do that because this is supposed to be an event for the community. It's called the Embrazo Dominicano, which means embrace the Dominican people. I have Latino um, answers in my blood, and I'm African American. So there's no reason why um, I, will feel, I felt that he was going to come to us and, and basically kick us out and, and call the 49th precinct on us, which he did. So basically what I did was, is that when the police started to come approach me, I backed up, had my hands up, you know, Black Lives um, uh, Matter movement, 
had my hands up and said, what's going on? They couldn't give me a, a, a concrete answer why they was approaching me, but they kept on pursuing me. So that's when I turned around and I approached um, Senator Diaz and I asked him, Senator, what did I do? Senator, what did I do? And he said nothing. Upon him saying nothing, everything should have stopped. The cops should have stopped pers pursuing me, which they did not. So I said, the only, way I can, only thing I could do, because I was, I was afraid of them committing bodily harm to myself and to my camp, uh, campaign manager, so what I did was I had to grab the mic so I can get the attention of the people and explain to them what was going on. Upon doing so, that's when uh, Ruben Diaz signaled to the, to, to the DJ to cut the mic, because he didn't want me to explain and to expose his guilty hands in this whole in encounter. It was unfortunate because the black community, right, the black community has, has no type of uh, history of basically putting out anybody who's Hispanic, Bengali, uh, Garifuna or anything, Dominican, we don't have that type of history. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why he basically approached us in that such a manner, and he's supposed to be a reverend. Okay, so let me get to the other, other questions because we, we've got that part cleared up. Let me ask you this question about seeing the future of your district. In the future of your district, if elected, what are your main priorities? Well, one of the things I want to do, the, 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 the district needs a, a fully functioning and fully funded community center to service the needs of the community. We have about 80 different ethnic groups in our district that have virtually little to do. What we do to enjoy ourselves is that if we don't do a block party or go to the park, there's really nothing to do. So we need to really anchor the economic stability of our community. And I want to create a, a, multi, a multicultural center that's going to tap into the off-Broadway and on-Broadway performances and bring world-class acts to the district. We have 80 different ethnic groups, different Bengali, African-American. Why don't we put together some type of performance? Instead of going downtown to anchor the economic stability of lower Manhattan, we need to anchor the economic stability in our district. And that's where I stand for. I'm for economic empowerment and, and, for, and for, the, for the people in our district that have gainful employment and jobs. So as people are listening to you right now, why would they vote for William Moore from your perspective? Because I am a fighter, okay? I, I, like, I, like you said earlier, I'm unbought, unbossed. And, 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 and the powers that be are not going to push me around. They're not going to basically co-op me to basically do something against the people. We, th this community has been suffering too, far too long, far too long. Okay, I visited uh, uh, another community in Long Island called Westbury, Old Westbury, right? And they had a, a you can look it up online, they have a community center called Yes We Can, fully funded, put, put together with the cooperation of the community. And it's, it's state of the arts, in, um, in, in, environmentally friendly, all, this, all these different things. Ruben Diaz Senior has been in office over 20 years. His son has been in office over, going on 14 years, even though he's not supposed to run again. He's still running. All these different politicians have been in office, but yet the people are still starving. You've got to ask yourself, why? Right. Why? William Moore, candidate for the 18th District. Thank you so much for coming and sharing no with problem. us. Good to have you. Okay. All right, you. stay here, stay here. Oh, no, don't go anywhere. Stay right there. Yep. <laughs> We're going to keep him right there. We're going to say, you, thank you for joining us. We'll be right back with more right after this. He'll stay in his seat, and so will I. <laughs>